Hey, all right, we made it happen, everybody. I don't know, I sound like Harry Carey there for Harry Carey. Well, everybody, welcome to another fantastic ZBrush Masters. Uh, we're very excited. Uh, we have Raphael Garcetti for this week. Raph, you might want to mute where you're watching because I think I can hear me talking right now on your side. Uh, is it you or did me? Is it me? Maybe me. Let's see. You're right. God, I suck already. Love your voice breaks. so much. Yeah, right. Just listen to you. So again, everybody, uh, welcome to our ZBrush Masters. Uh, we got Rafi Algrisetti tonight. We're very excited. I'm sure all of all of you, I can see coming through the chat already. Super excited to have you, Raf. Thank you so much for doing this. This is going to be a fun ride for sure for everybody, and looking forward to see what you got to show us. Um, yeah, man. Just so everybody is aware what we'll be doing throughout this stream. Raf's gonna be taking it over here in a second. And he's gonna be sharing his process and his work and how he works with inside of ZBrush. Uh, sharing a little bit about himself. If you don't know who he is, I don't know why not. You wouldn't know who he is. Uh, he is a definitely massive, huge ZBrush master fan. First ever winner of the Sculpt Up. He's oh, yeah. done presentations. God of War, art director now at Sony, uh, but just an all-out amazing artist and but amazing person as well. Thank you again for doing this. I will be taking questions as we go through in the chat. So anything you want to try and funnel to Raph, please throw it in the chat. I'll do my best to try and throw as many as I can at Raph, but obviously keep in mind there's a lot of people watching. I'm not going to be able to get everything to him. Uh, and then, of course, there's times where he needs to talk and go through the process of what he wants to share with you guys. So, again, thank you for uh, tuning in. And I'm going to hand it over now to Raph. And I'm just going to sit on the sidelines now and just look at the questions and answer what I can answer. Cool, man. Well, let me, uh, first of all, let me pop this up. I want to thank, thank you, man. Thanks for inviting me. I thought we are never going to do this. So I appreciate the invite. I'm honored to be here. I, I think I've, I've seen many of these ZBrush Masters online and uh it's always very inspiring so i'm very thankful to be you know to it's my turn to uh, try to do something cool and uh yeah paul like like we said like, keep the, the questions coming uh i i'm here to kind of talk to you guys as well i don't think we have a lot of opportunities to just chat and answer questions and i get to show some of the stuff that i've been that, that i've been doing like my process pretty much changes like on the personal side changes quite a lot every year I'm always trying to try something, some some new stuff, and try to optimize the workflow in, in different ways. And the last time we've done a presentation together was at the summit last year or two years ago, something like that. Yeah. Well, with the one missing, yeah, I think it was. Maybe, yeah, I think it might have been last year, wasn't it? And then yeah, you did, you did one the very first year too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this year just completely destroy any notion of time. 2020, no one knows what's going on. <laughs> yeah. But the last summit or or something like that, we I've done a presentation where I kind of walk you guys through. If you haven't seen it, it's on the Pixelogic uh, YouTube channel, and uh, you can check out some of the process behind like some of these projects, like the the, the Novus uh, sculpt and the Yoshimitsu one. Where I walk more through like 3D printing process, and uh, I actually got some of the stuff here that we can actually pick up and show. That would be cool. Uh, but I, I walk you guys through some of that process, and it, it kind of changed a little bit. What I've been up to in the past year has been a lot more of the illustration type of pipeline, doing a lot more concept art and designing characters in, inside of ZBrush. So I can walk you guys through some of the techniques that I've been that I've been uh, doing with that stuff, and how it changed my workflow to being able to pull it off some of these projects in like a couple of days, or or sometimes sometimes less. I feel that. Some of the stuff that I show with this Nova one, I've been looking for ways to finalize sketches a lot more faster than before. Because I've, I've I've been doing sketches in ZBrush for a long time since ZBrush came out, and I've I've been doing renders inside of ZBrush as well. Like the Yoshimitsu one is 
is a render inside of ZBrush, but I've been trying to find ways to uh, optimize that and, and, and use different softwares. Like I've been using a lot more 3ds Max to render these things and, and try to find the connection that I can go back and forth a lot easier. But the, the secret itself is, is in ZBrush. So I'm going to open some of you guys, some of these projects and talk about um, kind of how I got to the sculpt and, and where I kind of some of the approaches that I had. And Paul, feel free to send me some questions. I, if people are asking about Ninja Turtles, you can tell them to stop. That's my social media these days. Yeah, the, there is a lot. There's a lot <laughs> of turtles already happening. Uh, that's, a, that's all I get in, in social media. I post a new thing, and they're like, where's Smash Brothers, or where's Ninja Turtles? And I'll, I'll, it's funny. Yeah, you, you definitely have already had quite a bit already of Teenage Mutant the TM, TM thing. <laughs> that's coming. It's coming this week, hopefully. Hmm. All right, so I'm gonna let's see if I can open up this uh, kind of start with the the spawn project and kind of show you guys how this looks behind the scenes and how I got to this in like three days or something. Like that was that was a quick one. Well, you're, you're working on these during your spare time, of course, though, right? So you're it's not full three days. Is it? It's mostly on the weekends that I, I get right. to do these things. Yeah. So it's not a full three days, but it's it's kind of uh, how many Red Bulls I can take. <laughs> so like hour hour wise, you know, that you're not really working. Are you eight hours every day on the weekend on that piece? So you're no. really you're getting that done in yeah. a another reasonable short period of time. Yeah. 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 But you know, it goes like I use. I try to use a lot of uh, things to save time, and <clears throat> I've created over the years now. Created a, a lot of things that can get me a, a kind of a jump start, like base meshes. I've done different sets of hands, things that will kind of speed up my process to get these things done faster. So, like this thing here, it's like a the beginning of what that project is, the the spawn thing. And uh, I usually start from the base mesh that I have created, or I have a couple base meshes that I created, but the one that's on my gum road that I've done, like the basic anatomy, Mayo anatomy tutorials and stuff, it's it's this guy, which is very simple. Uh, it has like a kind of a zebra mesh topology that I got straight out of ZBrush. And I have the hands separate because usually I'm doing like gloves. And if I'm not doing gloves, it's a little bit easier to deal with the hands separate because I can pose them and, and decimate the rest of the body, but then keeping the hands uh, as is. So this is kind of usually what I use. And the face here, this is of course not the face of, uh, of the base mesh, but uh, this is quickly just me trying to get a sketch of what the spawn face will look like. So we're starting from something like this. And, and before I start, let me see if I can actually pull it up the, the boards, because that's something that people usually ask of like references and and things like that. Yeah, some people are asking, do you have you changed your compositing process at all that you've already shared? I've changed it kind of it really depends on the project because it's a lot more experimental as as we go through. Um, but it's kind of similar from what I've what I've done in the past. So like this is kind of the board that I made for this project. And I've talked to I've talked about this before, but some of the things that uh, that I that I that I kind of create here or references that I usually gather is more for kind of lighting and mood of the, some of the things that I like combined with like you know the character of course of like design wise and some of the different takes that some other artists um, did some of my own stuff here and uh, the way I go about it is um, and of course this varies but just walking guys through this one. This is kind of like a ZBrush, a first pass. And let me take a step back here in ZBrush. And initially, I was just doing the, the sketch of the character without thinking so much about composition. So I got from here to here. Um, like this is the beginning. That's the second pass. And then I took this to uh, to Photoshop. Actually, this was the pass here. And then in Photoshop, I quickly I, I just uh, put like a placeholder of the violator here and kind of like we started to think about composition wise in, in Photoshop of what I wanted to do. And then I went straight back into ZBrush and uh, just kept detailing this thing. So from here to here, 
I mean, this is a very pretty straightforward character in terms of uh, accessories and, and things like that. It's just pretty much like a, a anatomy, human anatomy with some cool, like, whatever, like extruded shapes and getting the, the you know, kind of the design in there. And then the cape, uh, the cape, usually the way I build the capes are kind of like all different pieces together or, or different pieces then that I merge it together. So here you can kind of see what the, like a Frank is, Frankenstein used to be of a, like it used to have a, a piece here just for the back side. And then this used to be another piece coming on the front. So I'm not trying to build this with just the one piece. I'm building it with a lot of different pieces that I can overlap. And then at the end of just combining it with the uh, Dynamesh, combine it all together. I'm not even bothering like cleaning it up all the back. The one thing I keep saying or talking about like usually with students and, and, and social media is that I could clean this up, but it's all, it all matters of time, right? It's all like how much time I want to spend on this. I'm working pretty much on that one uh, view. So it's very much like a marketing um, type of mentality. I've done a lot of print uh, projects before where you just kind of work for that one uh, view. So this is kind of like, I'm not cleaning it up things that I don't have to, but I'm also paying attention to how this thing looks from all the angles, just so, you know, when I'm, when I go into 3d, I have the, the right depth and it all feels like it, it's correct. If you're just working on the one view, you have to be very careful with how you think of it three dimensionally because how light's going to react to it and all that stuff. So I'm, I'm cleaning up what I have to. And then from here, it's just adding details. And then I, I use a lot of alphas. I'll use a lot of masking and, and pushing in details uh, up and down. And then from, from my sculpt, like I can, I can generate a lot of detail out of this and then kind of go from there. This is a separate piece for the color. For the skulls here, I, I modeled them on a separate scene and then brought them into the scene just for, you know, to keep it easier if I want to go back and change them or kind of change the design. So then from here, and feel free to interrupt me, Paul. I can I can just talk forever. When you are doing the composite, are you still doing it by hand or are you using the plugin, the ZBrush to Photoshop plugin now? Which was actually based upon your workflow. Oh yeah, no, yeah, I remember that. So yeah. I still do it like from here. Yeah. You can see this is a very straight up ZBrush render. Mm -hmm. Uh and I, I was just putting it in for composition, and whatnot. And then here is you can see the difference here, and here is just me bringing into 3ds Max. I'm using the camera to match the camera with uh, 3ds Max, and then I'm, you can see it's almost like one to one to uh, what I had in here. And then from here I can compensate and change the composition, and I can quickly go back and forth, you know, Max and ZBrush to to render um, and adjust whatever needs to be adjusted. And then in Max, I'm, I'm actually bringing in. Uh, poly paint from ZBrush, so this thing doesn't have UVs or uh, or, or or anything. It's just pretty much importing uh, a UV channel with poly paint. So it's very easy for me to go back and forth, just as I would in KeyShot or any other software. I'm actually doing that in 3ds Max because I have a little bit more flexibility and I know more uh, Max than than uh, other softwares. So from here, let me uh, see here. Yeah, then I added the chains based on that on that initial kind of composition. And the chains here are very straightforward, just duplicating a link and then bending them. I'm not, I'm not doing anything fancy. I know ZBrush has tons of tools to kind of put me in the dust, but I'm, I'm still uh, doing doing these things uh, somewhat manually. Uh, you think it's from your traditional background? Because you have such a strong traditional clay background as well. You think that's where some of that's coming from for you? That that's definitely part of it, but I think it's just, just me using ZBrush for from from the beginning, I guess, and not being able to catch up to all the cool stuff that you guys do. Well, it's time yeah. too. Yeah, you're <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, a question for people watching right now: Since you're an art director <clears throat> at Sony, what would you look for in a portfolio for someone that wants to be a character artist or a concept sculptor? What are your main, you would say your main points you look for for when you're? Yeah, yeah. It definitely varies if you're trying to be like a, a concept sculptor versus like a character artist. Because character artists, you definitely want to have interpretations of, of concept arts into a, a character, right? Like picking up concepts for 
from different artists or if you have your own concepts that probably not recommended at the beginning, but just seeing how you interpret some things into 3D, because that's the, the big day-to-day -day, uh, task that you're going to be doing. So a lot of the times where I'm interviewing people, I want to see the concept art and I want to see how you interpret it. And you need to have a couple pieces like that just to show off your skills. Um, because I can I can easily like look at the concept and and see your model and ask you why didn't you do certain things or why did you why did you change this or why did you change that so you have to be very aware of some of the decisions that you're making on your own work and maybe sometimes you make it better you can make it worse you can make it better but it's still not it still not be uh, correct right because we want to see how you interpret something so just watch out for that if you if you're trying to get a job as a character artist I, I recommend you doing that and having a lot of sketches also on your own free time, just kind of playing with ideas and, and anatomy, just being able to sculpt something fast and not being very kind of a, kind of a, a slave of the tool, right? Like just kind of being able to sculpt something and, and show that you can get to a shape very fast. And then the other side of it, some finish it projects from a concept of some somebody else. Now, if you're trying to be a, uh, a concept sculptor, I guess, we don't. We usually don't hire those in in games. Um, I think I mean it's changing a little bit now. Like a lot of people, a lot of concept artists are using more three D, uh, and that's good. But the base of it is more of the two D skills. How you can uh, create variations, or even if you use three D, you still need to have a solid two D base and a two D portfolio. Uh, but for movies and stuff like that, it's a lot more common. Um, yeah, right. That makes sense. Well, how many pieces do you say you usually? Probably what? four or five strong pieces if you're a character artist four yeah yeah usually like two very high polished or, yeah. or finished like okay. that you can call it like here's my two latest pieces that are very uh high or very finished and then a lot of fillers i guess you can call it fillers but you like a lot of more just to to show you that you've been doing this for a while that that you that you've tried enough that and usually th those don't have to be on your art station or anything but once you go on a in, uh, in studio interview, I want to see a lot of those kind of rough, rough sculpts and all that. So someone's asking about your detailing and what polygon count you usually playing with. Like for example, this spawn, what's he at right now for like the body as far as polygon count, so they can get an idea because that's being asked, so they can see. It's like six, six million, six million. Yeah. Yeah. I I usually don't even look at the numbers. I, I go until the ZBrush takes a while to to subdivide, and then I'll go back. Or then I start splitting it up. Like here, the head now is together, but I started with the head separate. And as I uh, I go through and I start decimating things, I can can kind of split them up more. Let me open the the other one file later. Okay. While you're opening that file, I guess I'll throw another question. Some people are asking about posing. Do you? You do mostly asymmetry sculpting for the most part, right? You pretty much go into posing pretty quick, right? Yeah, I try to. I mean, I try to go with symmetry for as long as I can. But if it's something that I know it's gonna, I'm gonna have to re-sculpt later. Like that arm, if I was to sculpt that arm, you know, straight and then bend it into a pose, I'd much rather just go with the pose and split the arm, kind of still work on the torso symmetrical, but have that arm split. Okay. So I kind of go. Um, it really depends on the project, but I try to do as much as I can with symmetry just to save time. Sure. But some, some some things you gotta just commit to it. Here, so uh, really quickly, like this one, same thing. I started from that same base mesh, and you can see how uh, the body is still the same, but the face. It's the it's my base mesh, but uh, but changed. I really kind of pushed the proportions early on. Oops, opened the wrong one. Oh, never mind. Where is it? No, oh, there you go. Yeah, so um, from here, this one's pretty straightforward. Of just It's mostly the face. So from here to here, you can kind of see how it changed, and it's just more polishing up, adding secondary details into this. And then from here to here, then I'm just throwing a lot of um, kind of poor alpha details just to have an idea of just what the surface noise will look like. And then from here the, on top here, I'm just starting to add details. For some of these uh, kind of illustrations that I've been doing, I've noticed that I have to keep things a lot more 
on the secondary forms just for visibility and or readability. And then uh, the tertiary can be a lot more kind of take a step back and just add those surface, the surface variation, but the, 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 the selling of it is the secondary form. So you can kind of see here, there's a lot more of that going on. Did and then I knew- the Did you make the alphas yourself for all the detailing? No, no, I use, um, it's kind of like stuff that I gather over the years, but I use mostly a very simple pour Core detail. Um, here's, I mean, here's poly painted, but you can see. One trick that I'm using just to get um, with like the sharpness is to do like an alpha, very early alpha pass, and then using a lot of like cavity masking to like push it in or um, get more, a lot more of the information to come through. But the alphas, like I've, I, it's been a while since I've made like an, a custom alpha. I usually do those for more of the statue work or something that needs a specific um, detail that I've that I don't want, don't want to use something that people other people are using. Do you have the alpha available that they could see it? Yeah, yeah, I'll pull it up. Throw it, throw it on like that one that doesn't have the skin details. They're asking if they could see that. Yep, for sure. Wait a second. Probably show cavity masking too, because I don't know if everybody, even though we know, man, not everybody necessarily knows that too. For some reason, I can't really click on the tab. Oh, your tablet went on you. Look into it here. So, let's see here if we can do this. So if I'm doing something like this and I'm gonna bring in an alpha. My tab is like clicking. Do, do, do. I open a window on a, a different monitor here, just one yeah. second. No worries. So you use the standard brush when you're doing this? Is that the brush you use when you're gonna do your uh, yeah your alphas? That's the brush you're sticking with? Yeah, most of the time I'll use this. So this is kind of one of the, I don't know, can you see it? Yep. yep. Yeah, this is kind of like a poor, one of the poor ones that I used, and I don't even know where I got this. It's been so long that I used this guy. Uh, I think you can find it online if it's like from like an orange texture or something. And then the other one that I use is, um, I have this skin pack mm -hmm. that someone made. Now I'm going to mess up the name. and. I'll find it and I'll, I'll kind of share with you guys later, but there's a skin pack that um, that I use. And this one is kind of more of a le leather type of pattern. Right. I think my Cintiq is clicking outside of the screen. I leave it. This usually happens there. You go. Never fails. <laughs> I, I heard that you have to blow it on the tip of it. You heard of that technique? I, I, I've heard. No, I haven't heard that one. I've heard something about pressing really hard when something. I don't remember what it was on pressing the pressing part, and then it resets the pen or something like that. I don't yeah. know. I know but it never fails when you you go to show something in stream. Something happens to your screen. <laughs> it never fails. It's probably just a driver reset you got to do. I don't know. I bite it to get that tip off. And, so uh, you pretty much just you're pretty much staying old school. You're not trying to do any tricks. You're just I'm gonna grab an alpha. I'm gonna drag it out and just start dragging it out in spots I like and pick the size that you want. Oh, you know me. I'm the worst ZBrush. No, well, I just I'm just trying to make sure people can see that you you know you're not trying to cut a corner per se. You're yeah yeah. I mean, it pulls a little bit of that traditional right. A traditional artist had to sit there and do this all by hand. They didn't just grab an alpha and just say put it on the whole mesh right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to do this. Like sometimes I use the surface noise to get get it throughout the, the mesh, and I'll do some quick UVs. Sure. Uh, sometimes I just do it for uh, for the view, for the angle. So I'm not even doing it with the UVs. I just do it from like a planner projection, and then I'll, I'll kind of mask it or do a, a morph target and just paint on the area that I want. Project it again, kind of find seam lines that I could just add to the model to speed up. Like I'll do a lot of that of like, I know something will be a pain in the ass to apply an alpha later on. So I'll add a seam line that I can mask it. You know what I mean? Like if I were to find a way to get 
things like this was a seam line then i don't have to worry about like doing uvs for this because i could just do a, a noise and then um a noise projection like a planet projection and not worry about angles i could easily just mask it do a, a surface noise mask it again surface noise do that kind of stuff so then from here uh you know let's say i, I had god damn it why is this spinning it's weird oh i know what it is is it touch on on your tablet or something yeah yeah the i think the right button is freaking out your, or if you have touch, that happens to me sometimes. Touch turns on and everything. Going I'm just to disable this because I was using this pen or this Cintiq on a different uh, disable. There you go. On a different PC, and this is what, yeah, there you go. I'm an idiot. We're back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so like if we, uh, if I had details and stuff like that, and, and, and I had the pores as part of it, and I could kind of come in here and inside masking and do like a mask by cavity. And then from here, like if I just hide the masking, I can kind of pushing the detail so I can inflate it down or something. You can kind of see like it gives me some sharpness back to it. And I mean, this is very poorly done, but you can get the idea if I do this with other, uh, other cases. And I could easily, like usually when I'm doing a sketch, and I'll show this here very quickly, like if I'm doing like a, I don't know, like a, a pattern. And uh, this feels very rough. And then, you know, if I wanted this to kind of look final, like I'll just move it out, mask by cavity. Change the profile here real quick. Inverted. And I think, does it, do you usually stay with the default settings of mask by cavity? I, I actually go linear, like just a straight. Yep. It gives me a better kind of range and then like if I just start doing that again, yeah. like you can see like the sharpness just kind of gives me that kind of finished look. So a lot of the quick sketches that I do, and then I'll, I'll come back with the, the masking. Well, thanks for adding the ask to cancel the quick save, by the way. Find the escape key. Thanks. Yeah, I never told you this, but this is very helpful. <laughs> the little yeah. things in life. <laughs> the little things, yeah. yeah. But yeah, this gives me like a finished result very quickly if I'm doing a sketch, so from here, like if I go back to this real quick, you can probably see it. Like this guy looks sharp the way he looks because of that. Like I, I quickly, I mean, this is very messy because you don't see a lot of, a lot of stuff is hidden, but I can kind of get this sharpness very quickly into, uh, and then I'll, I'll just layer on top. I'll go back, re-sculpt some of the muscles, like sharpen again, push it in, and I can quickly get a, a, a nice result you know, with that. So like in the face, same thing, I can kind of just throw some, you know, kind of throw some details. Let me zoom in so you guys can see. I throw some alphas and, uh, and then once I'm happy with this, I can kind of mask it. And then I'll use the cavity mask for, you know, poly paint and other things like that. So I can kind of paint this. It is kind of more old school. You guys seen this before. Um, but just I can poly paint, I can kind of, uh, oops, too much. I can kind of push in the details and gives me that sharpness back for, for these type of things. And that definitely helps with. Uh, you're using inflate, right? Yeah, you're using inflate. Yep, I'm using inflate to like push it down. And yeah. you can kind of see the difference in the, in the sharpness. So uh, here, let me show you this guy. Is this it? Yeah, this this guy is like you know very quick sculpt, very uh, you know you can kind of I've done this enough and it comes a little more natural where I just doing kind of a quick sculpt, throwing the poor details, masking it out, pushing it in, throwing colors in the in in the plate. Like I try to throw colors in as soon as I can, just to start seeing the final result and start getting um, closer to what I would see in 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 a render and. The thing that helped me that I've been doing this a lot, a lot of back and forth, a lot of rendering, bringing the poly paint. I'll do some curvature mapping in, in 3ds Max to then push the uh, mask. The since I don't have UVs, I'll mask the specular using uh, curvature maps, right? So like I, I can get the details to pop without needing a, a, a specular map, um, and I'll do tricks like that inside of Max to like help it. And I've done it, like I said, back and forth. 
so I kind of know what to expect when I put it in Max and uh, or Keyshot or any other rendering. I've done a lot of things in V-Ray and I've been doing more Arnold now, but I, I know kind of I can get to this result, which is honestly, it was the trickiest part for me, that bridge of, of uh, understanding how to get this, the same look that I have in ZBrush into, uh, into a different uh, render, you know? So I can get this kind of... Yeah, so one question about someone's asked, that uh, jacket you were making, since obviously, this, how long ago did you do this piece? A year and a half ago? Yeah, seven months, yeah, it was last year. So or this year, the jacket, you were, were you just doing an extract? What were the kind of just quick overview of how you were doing clothing? Yeah, it was a... Uh, yeah, like for him, for like his jacket and getting that. Yeah, I started with just a... Uh, uh, uh cube i guess and i was just dynamashing and pushing it around putting into shape almost like clay getting in, into shape um not a big secret on that and the, the thing that i've been doing a lot is just uh getting in here let's do it here real quick make this a dynamesh see how old school i am and that And then it's, it's literally like massaging it, like rotating. And I've been doing kind of like a lot of capes now for some of the comic stuff that, that I've been doing. And uh, doing stuff like this and uh, kind of pushing the, the shapes, kind of getting the initial block out of the, the flow of the cape. And honestly, like you know, it's kind of a quick, uh, quick workflow. You can kind of get the shape very quickly, working with the folds and trying to get things that look somewhat believable. And you just gotta watch out for the kind of going through. But once after I have the shape like this, all I do is uh, turn turn on the back facing, so I'm not affecting what's behind it. But then if I want to do like small adjustments or small folds, I'll use then some alphas for um, like cloth alphas for the big folds. So I'll, I'll kind of come in, like let's say this, for example. You know, I could kind of start getting some like some cloth variation that feels natural. But again, the main folds are already here. I'm speeding it up through the, this process, but uh, just so you guys have an idea, that's kind of how I get it to where um, to where it is. Like I'll get the main folds, I'll get the main shape into into the into place, and then um, you know I'll come in with these alphas and start try to get the the secondary and tertiary breakups to the folds. I mean now with the ZBrush cloth stuff, like I, I'm sure it can do some some crazy stuff, and I've been playing with that. And you can get some natural, even more natural flowing as you kind of just move it around and kind of smooth it out, the transitions and kind of get the flow a lot nicely. But I've been doing it like this for years now and uh, getting it, you know, to uh, to where it feels natural. Those alphas definitely help to speed up that process. You know what I mean? Yep. Just trying to find something for somebody that... Uh, they were asking about a little more deep in detail when you're doing your uh, ZBrush to Photoshop work while I'm finding the video that you did already at the time. Wait, was that not the question? I'm looking at the chat now. Uh, well, the, the questions are coming through hot, so <laughs> I don't know where it went now. <laughs> I'm, I'm still trying to... <laughs> My bad if I, if I misunderstood. No, that no, 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 you were good. Your question was good. I'm just, I'm trying to answer questions at the same time you're already answering questions. All right, all right, cool, cool. Yeah, let me know if I, I messed up. Several people have asked about your hair techniques, so you ever at some point tonight you want to go through that i kind of blow dry it you know like get it <laughs> are you using gel or are you using mousse what are you yeah. doing dude i'm getting bold so i just need to try to cover up the spots this is my covid cut right now right here. <laughs> uh, stupid jokes hey, it's uh, <laughs> hair techniques I mean, let me see if i like I, i've been doing uh a lot more just kind of finalizing things in Photoshop. So things like this, and I can show you guys this right here, because that's probably <laughs> talking about hair. There's a lot of hair in, in this one. 
Um, let me see if I can pop this one up. All right. All right, I found the video. Um, Raphael did, um, he's done a couple summits with us. And like I said, he did the very first summit with us in, for, in 2014. So at that summit, he showed a, a good in-depth workflow of how he goes from ZBrush to Photoshop. So I'll share that in the chat for you all. Awesome. Somebody was asking that. So that way that can be covered. Someone can go and rewatch that video as much as they want. Thanks, Paul. Yeah, let me find the good questions. Times. When you poly paint, do, what material do you usually use anyways when you poly paint? I do everything with the basic. The basic? Yeah. Like I go back and forth with this, the flat, if I want to see pure color. But uh, basic is... Light, lighting right now? You've got a custom lighting too right now, don't you? Like no. You fix your lighting? No? That's the no, default? No, it's, it's all the default. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You guys are that good. Yeah. <laughs> Where's that? My goal here is to make you awkward, Paul. I'll get... I'll, I'll get there. All right, so this one, uh, yeah, here, like I said, I've been doing like a lot of different techniques. Some of the stuff that I've done is um, more painted on top of sculpted hair. So like if you look at even the Star Fox piece, things like um, like Falco here, and I'll show you guys how this one looked in, in ZBrush. It's kind of a mix. I've, I've done like, look at Star Fox. Like he has the these kind of base hairs and I made this in using fiber mesh just to kind of use it as a guide and uh if you guys use fiber mesh before this is how it looks in zbrush but i i have the basically the geo that i can throw it in kind of a render and i could probably do it here it's just the, the color is off but i could kind of get a solid base and very close to what this looked like here which gave me that pitch fuzz gave me like just the base flow and fiber mesh is very use, easy to use in zbrush you just have to try it and the one thing that I recommend is keep it into uh, separate patches. So what I would do, like the Mohawk will be a different fiber or a different uh, patch. And then at the end of it, I'll just convert all to Geo and combine it and then use the, the basic brushes to like move it in and in the place. And then, um, you know, just get it, get it looking the way I want it. So that's kind of what I did for this. I exported this into 3ds Max, same deal. And then this is like another technique um basically using clay cubes to get at least a basic flow and this goes very well with the fiber mesh if you have that or if you have something else uh even if i render this and then i wanted to paint it paint over in photoshop i have a basically a basic flow for what what the hair is doing and then i can get um you know like i can pick up colors and i can just finalize it which is basically what that uh falco kind of looked like so let me pop that one up so you guys could see, because I didn't want to sculpt a lot of feathers and stuff like that. And you can kind of see, like I did do some feathers, really basic just to get a, something to work with. And uh, just, just trying to get that. And then like, that's what I'm saying. Like if I get the, the kind of basic brushes, the clay tubes, just the kind of the brush flow I can use that to paint over in Photoshop later to try to get like a concept art kind of concept uh, piece from this. So these are kind of the two, two techniques that I'm using for hair. Something like uh, something like this chick. Uh, let me open this one up. So something like uh, this one. Let me go back. Yeah, something like this one that has this, this hair, it was kind of a, a, a mix of those techniques where I did have some hair, some fiber mesh, and then I started doing different, uh, compositing different hair types. This one's a little heavy. So for games, you you go to this detail, right? For gaming as well, for when you're in your pipeline at Sony. And oh yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Nothing's really changing for you except you're having a game mesh, and then you're just transferring everything to maps. 
Yeah, yep, exactly. Yeah. What it what basically changes is how we build certain things because uh, you just have to be smart in how you're gonna build a the low poly mesh later. You know, so you you would combine certain things or you think about how certain things could be put it together or baked into maps versus geometry. So you just have to uh, be a little aware of what some of the things you're doing in the in the high res. But the le the level of detail and kind of the, the craftsmanship is the same. Yeah, some people have chimed into the during tonight if you want to share any hard surface techniques too as we go here <clears throat> as well. If you got any as you're going through. Yeah, yeah, I can. How many years would you say you've been sculpting? Well, Paul, how many <laughs> years you've been sculpting? <laughs> Well, uh, well, let's see. I'll go to high school, so I would say twenty. God, this is this is dating me now. 24, oh wow, four, twenty-four years, twenty-five years. But I've been zbrushing. I say since two thousand five for me. So that's sixteen, yeah. or fifteen? Yeah. No, sixteen. Going on, going on sixteen. Yeah, yeah. I would say yeah about that because when when zbrush came out, I was already working. Yeah as a modeler, but I was doing everything in Max. And those are the days where yeah. I just had a poly, you know, uh, kind of do like- Curves, yeah, lock yeah. curve. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So to do something like this, like I remember back in the day, Fausto was doing those Max in like, I don't know if he used Max or Maya, but he was doing those, like something like this in like without ZBrush and that was like, you know, yeah. mind blowing. So it's been, it's been about 15, I think yeah so that's why a lot of the things that i i do is like just kind of evolving with with the tool which is that's why i can't really keep up because there's always something new and i honestly feel that i can do what i want to do with what well, what we have so I, I it's very hard for me to go and like start using unless it's something like fiber mesh or something that that really uh will change how i you know how i work and i'm sure i'm missing out on a lot of things but i just need time to catch up yeah. This is a great question, I think. The piece you have up right now, you consider this done and be ready to, in essence, show somebody if you wanted to show something, not counting the other process you're gonna do inside of Photoshop. Like as far as the ZBrush part, this is pretty much done for you, right? It's done, but I've, I'm only doing the front. That's the trick of it. If you look at the back. Yes, yeah, so you're only doing what the viewer's even going to see. Yeah, yeah. So this is definitely like a concept sculpt that, you know, if people like this, this and i'll go in the back but I'll, i mean honestly in, in a at work or if i'm doing a, a profession professional project i'll never let it get to this this is like just the messy work right that you should never do what brushes were you using to do those hard surface parts on the arms so a lot of these things are um, a mix of some alphas so i have some alphas to give me this kind of stuff right here and then some of these are just um uh, most of this stuff is slash i've been using a lot of slash brush to um well i, I let's see i lost that cube like uh so masking right masking is, is probably the big one where i'll do something like this and i'll kind of pull it up or i'll do uh kind of push it out and then you know i could use either poly paint this just just to have have it for later if i want to change it um, and you polygrouped it too, right? So you poly. Yeah, poly sorry, I said poly paint. Yeah, polygroup. Okay. Yeah, polygroup, and then um, you know I can kind of zero mesh using the the polygroups. I want to clean this up, or if I can just dyno mesh it. Usually, I'm using a lot of dyno meshing as I'm doing this. Uh huh. But then the slash kind three. of gives me. You're using slash three, right? Yep. Yeah. So there are a couple slash brushes for people. So that's the one that when you launch ZBrush will be there, but there's a couple other ones. Oh, I didn't know that. Are those different? Yeah, they're a little different. Okay. But this one kind of does a trick for me. And then uh, to clean it up later, like I'll do um, using the H polish, kind of get, get like the, the sharp edges. And you're pretty much just always sticking default brush you're not really doing anything special to the brushes right on anything you're just sticking with what the default settings are and going except for the back facing just to avoid getting the the stuff from behind i'm not i'm rarely doing stuff 
I usually change, you know, like I'll change the, the focal shift and things like that, but nothing super custom. Yeah, just so everyone, the slash brushes I was bringing up, go to your light box and in the brush tab, there's a couple more slash brushes. Just, this is just so everybody knows. But he's using the one that is right in your brush palette when you go. Yep. Yeah, so for, even for things like this, like this, the rope, like I would do it uh, just a one section, duplicated, flat, and then kind of bending into shape, doing that kind of stuff. I'm not doing any like crazy, um, crazy techniques for that. Like living in 2015 or something. <laughs> no, but I think this is a great example of showing like you are just being an artist, right? You're just what you know and you're going with it. And it, obviously it's beautiful and it works. So uh, a lot of times we try to look for the quick one button solution. Sometimes that's not it. Sometimes it's just yep. doing the raw sculpt, go for it. That, that's the one thing that I, I'm, when I'm talking to artists and the team and, and they kind of know all the all different techniques and I'm, like I'm gonna do this rope using like, you know, kind of uh, what can you use to do this? Array meshes or whatever, just like keep it, and I'm doing this and all that stuff. And and I'm like, dude, this, this doesn't even look good. Just duplicate a mesh around and like call, call it a day, you know? So it's just, it's just that kind of, as long as it, it looks good, I think the, like having an eye for just proportion and, and design is it's important as well, not just the technique. Well, you, 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 you opened up a bag there when you showed the rope. Now, a lot of how did you do the rope? How did you do the oh, rope? That's usually what I get when I'm doing <laughs> ropes. Uh, ropes are popular. There, there is a rope brush inside a ZBrush, too, though. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, you're right. Yeah, yeah. It's in, it's in Lightbox now, though. But show your, what you do. So Because you showed it, and now there's a bunch coming through. How did you do that? Oh, rope? man. I'll show you very, very quickly. I'm doing a lot of... A lot of messy things that uh, I hope helps people just with uh, overall. Yeah, hopefully I'm just directing you in the right way right now. You're good. Make sure I understand the question so people don't. Yeah. Well, that's pretty much one of your technique, how to make the ropes, and specifically how did you do the knots part of the rope, too. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, the, the rope itself is like, I'm going to do it very, very dirty here, but if I had the one shape and... Uh, I'm just gonna get this into shape here and whatever, like something like this. And uh, and I'll polish this, I'll probably detail this, whatever, like detail with the, the alpha for the rope. And of course, this is not gonna work because the rope itself needs, you know, the other side. But imagine this is a, a, a cool, like twisted knot link or whatever. Mm -hmm. I'll duplicate this around. Whatever, how many times I need. Let me, let me adjust this. And then um, I do have ropes ready, just so I'm not doing this every time. And then, yeah, I mean, for the knots, it's just kind of the same thing. I mean, this is pretty messy. Make yeah, so a rope. You're doing the one, and then you're just duplicating them. So that's what's creating the, the spiraling look of the rope, then. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Okay. And then, uh, I mean, just from here, I'll, I'll just put a knot. I'll just kind of bend it around, mask it, bend it. Do you use the gizmo at all, or are you still only using the transpose line? Man, I love the transpose. Yeah? I use, I use it. Yeah. I use quite a lot. I still use the gizmo for a few things. I think it's, uh, precision is, is nice, nicer there. But uh, I just like the fact that I can spin it like that, like a, like a bone. Something that you guys you guys You're broke me. Doing is really so simple, simplistic, right? You just just make it happen. Are you making it happen? It's awesome. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then the question someone asked where the rope brush. Go into your light box and go in the brush, and then there's a beta tester IMM folder, and there's a rope brush in there actually. So this is a shitty version of what my rope would look like. And a lot of things is just looking at reference and trying to replicate it. Because I can get like a nice rope and, and using this technique, I can make it look nice. Let me see. You can throw me some questions. Let me see what's next here on in line. 
Oh yeah, like talking about sci-fi and kind of hard edges or hard surface techniques. Let me open this one. Um, how do you decide an idea before you start sculpting and posing and choosing what will be in the scene? What's your process for you as an artist? Do you sketch out a bunch of things first, like on something before you dive into Zebra? It's like, let me just open this, my bad. Oh, there's 20 on. Sorry, Paul, one sec. More no, brain. No, 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 go. Brain freeze. I'll, I'm answering stuff in the chat. Do, 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 do. Let's see here, iron heart. Yep. Shh. Okay. Okay. So what was the question? Like how, what do I, if I sketch stuff in ZBrush before? Yeah, no, well, for you, how do you, because before you even dive in and start sculpting, do you just dive into ZBrush and you have your idea where you want to go? Or do you kind of sketch out some stuff to see what, in essence, what the whole scene and the, the camera angle that you're going to do? What's yeah, there? that's a good question. Like I, I try, it's a mix of both, right? Like I try not to spend a lot of time on the idea I try to do things like if I'm if I'm spinning around too much of like oh man the composition is going to be like that and I need this guy this character or this is kind of the angle whatever, and I'm spending a day just thinking about the idea, I'll just stop mentally stop and just start something because I know I'm going to need the character no matter what so I'll start sketching, like if I want to do a venom for example like I'll just start sketching you know venom as is just to get the overall proportions and not getting a you know, not not spending too much time on the design, just getting the base rough forms that I know I can change later, and then I'll start the, the idea will start forming in my head, and um, and then I can go back and look at some references, like compose some stuff in Photoshop. I'll do some quick sketches in Photoshop, um, and then you know either like I'll I'll keep going or I'll just give up or I'll just move on to something else. But then I'll 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 uh, shelve that to later. You know, so if even I have a lot of projects here that that I have shelved just because, and I know a lot of people like that, and I, I used to be like that, that I can think of something for like a couple of days of something that I'll execute on and I'll waste a couple of days thinking about that. So I'll start working and I'll keep thinking as, I, um, as I'm as i doing that. And then if I come up with something cool, I'll finish. If not, then I'll, I'll kind of shelve it, move on and then bring it back at some point. So like an example of that is it's like this right here that I haven't showed to anybody. I have a couple of them and I can you show one. So like I started this Lobo piece and uh, okay, this thing loaded too. So this is kind of something I was doing. It's the same thing I, I started, like just getting uh, an idea and I didn't know what I wanted to do or I had some some references and I was just like, okay, cool. I'm just, I'll just start sketching a Lobo and then kind of, kind of evolved into the scene and then I can kind of get some ideas in, in, in Photoshop and then I start blocking it out and then I'll sketch it over on top. So again, it's more, I have like an overall idea of what I want to do, but it evolves as I go through it. So you expect to see that one in the future. So here, uh, just to talk about that, Iron Heart. Like I started with that one Iron Man that I've done before. And you can kind of see I just dynamashed it into um, into one piece. And then for the, the helmet, for example, it's all like sketching in ZBrush. And this is a technique that I've done. I've been doing many, many years. Like I, a lot of things in Mass Effect that I worked on, it was kind of this technique of just kind of sketching uh, basic forms into just one mesh. And again, using the same thing like masking. This is very messy, but you can kind of get an idea of where the shapes need to be. And I mean, a lot of people use this technique, so not nothing new here. And then from here, I would just extract what I need to clean it up, because then I can usually easily use the zero mesher and get clean um, meshes that then it's easy to, to polish. But the trick is here. I think the trick is just how you sketch this initial portion of it. And then same thing, like moving down to the body. Like I'll just get, even before I sculpt the shapes, I'll get colors in here. So if I turn off the, the colors, so you can kind of see, you know, the shapes for this, but it really changes when I turn on the color. 
and I did this live, by the way, or, or a, a part of it, I did it live. You'll, you'll follow my, my YouTube channel if you guys are not there yet. You can kind of see like some of the shapes, very messy. Like this thing is just so rough. But again, I'm just doing it rough because I'm changing the design as I go. I need to be able to completely erase something and start from scratch if I wanted to. That's the beauty of designing and concept art, like not being kind of uh, not being like stuck to a certain decision you made. So you can kind of see here how it evolved with the heart and uh, then moving down to the arms. And, and you can kind of see here what I'm talking about, how the polish changed. So um, go back a little bit more. So from here, this is all one sub tool, Atomeshed. Here, I started to extract some pieces and uh, and then polish it up, like from here to here. Like this is a this is a new piece. So I can easily z remesh and get it clean. That's another piece. It's a mix, and then I start doing that with the shoulders, and I'll I'll go down. This is like a rendering technique, just going down, extracting, getting it to look nice, getting all the body. To me, after I'm done with the sketching part. Random matching part. This is just more. This is just therapy. We're just going through and tracking pieces and getting it clean. A lot more. It's a lot more mechanical because I already have the design figured out. Can you demonstrate one of the extractions so they get an idea? Of yes. Like doing one of the pieces from beginning to end. You don't use much Z model, right? You're just pretty much this is your technique for hard surface. Yeah. Is, 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 some, is the sound popping for anybody else or is it only on my side? Racker sounds popping for me. So I don't know if it's me or it's everybody. Oh, that sucks. Yeah. Yeah, let me know. I mean me though. I don't know. It could be a ZBrush also like messing up with the No, they're saying the sound sounds good. It's probably me. So that's all that matters. Cool. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> whatever, Paul. You can you hear me? All causing problems again. <laughs> Yeah, so like extracting here, it's like uh, I'll go like if I would do this biceps, I will go mask these P's, like make sure I'm getting what I needed. That, and then um, I'll go in in here, and I'll change the thickness, and you can kind of live or change this before accepting. So I'll do something like that, hit accept. So from that masking, I got this piece, which has thickness on it. And I can kind of mask this interior and kind of still change the thickness um, how I want it. And then when I'm happy with this, I would um, kind of smooth it out if I have to. If not, get out of here, I'll just save. Oh, you no. Use, uh, just so people don't know, too, you use, wait for, just wait for it. Uh, you waited, you held down control so you can mask out every other color you put for one. You used that what you were just using real quick right there, that feature, correct? Yeah, 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 I'm yeah. just doing that. Yeah, I, yeah, I had, I had like probably a hundred sub uh, tools open, so I think it's going to save all of them. <laughs> yeah, so it isn't what he was doing real quick, just so people understand when he did the extract and then he was masking everything else in the front, he was just holding down control for the transpose line. His brushes. You think it's better if I open new one? Because I think it's gonna save my hun a hundred tools, right? Sure. Go ahead. Yeah, we'll kill it and then open it up. Yeah, that's why it's like probably frozen. It's probably in the process of doing something. I'm just doing too much. Uh, let me see if I can find a question why you why we're doing that. You can answer that didn't involve showing something. Uh, you, so you, those are all your three D prints in the background that you worked on. Here we go. Yep. No, 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 not all of them. Not all of them. I've been doing a lot more of the 3D printing, um, which is fun. And with the Boolean stuff, like this thing is, is so nice. Uh, Elon, I'm not quite understanding your question for sure. You're asking what can you success other than exercises to evolve as a sculptor? Are you asking what can you do otherwise than just exercise to evolve as a sculptor? I'm not quite clear on the question. I asked you in chat, but you might have missed it. So if you can rephrase your question, then we can ask that. All right, we're back. 
That was my do bad. Do you have any of your old sculpts? Like, do you save, like, say, we taught you for 15 years. Can you pull up a sculpt from 15 years ago? Do you even have anything like that? Uh, uh, man. I know. Um, I don't think I do because I changed computer and I, I have some old hard drives, but I don't have them here with me. Yeah. But uh, they're not pretty. Well, as an artist, you're pretty much documenting your artwork through imagery and posting on your Instagram, your Facebook art page. Yeah. Oh, yeah. actually, actually, let me show you guys this. This is fun. Uh -oh. We we got we got something. We started something. So Raph is just getting something to show us. So give him one moment. Okay, I'm back. Some posing. Yeah. So I made, and I'll probably start doing this again. I've made a a book. Let's see what what year is this? Go, Kyle. Go full screen his camera. I made a book in 2009. So this is like 11 years ago. And I, I should have done this more, and I'll probably do this more. But I have some some stuff here, and you can kind of see even the influence. I, I've never posted this because this is like a early on Marvel stuff that I did in two thousand and nine. Paul, I can't hear you. I think your your mic went away. You when when I go all you, I get muted. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you made this book, but you didn't release it. No, this is just for me. Just for you. Uh, and I've made like a Black Widow. Oops. I think I remember you seeing this book at one of your shows. I you're just showing it. Though. No, I, I think you know, no. just go through. I've made some like Hasbro stuff. Actually, I found this uh, last week because I was throwing out. I throw a bunch of like 3D prints I had from back in the days. It's kind of stupid, but it's just I didn't need them anymore. This is like the Dominance War. Oh back yeah, in good times. Yeah. Back in those are old. <laughs> those are old, yeah. But 2009, you see, like, it's this the, the time that I was doing a lot of cinematic work. So I have some like uh, this is shitty paper. Yeah, I had some like Transformers, uh, okay. Transformers stuff. Yeah, this is fun. I found this was like, oh man, 2009. I have some, uh, I made some like an angel statue collection that I never got paid for. So, I mean, like this guy was like a, an oh, angel wow. on a dragon. It, Mike, it was statue, like a like 15 foot, 20 foot tall statue. And then you never, and they made it and you never got paid for it. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's a nice uh, way to, you know, get used that's to. A, that's a good way to document your work is make a book every year of your work, though. That's a good idea. That's I know, but I missed 11 years. <laughs> <laughs> have a library. Library. That, that's, a, that's a great idea, actually. That's a good way to document yourself. But you know, like, yeah, that, I think that's the beauty of uh, Instagram because since I started doing that more, like, I have some, some sort of a track of things yeah. that I've done, and I wish I had that for for now, like I had, like we used forums back in the day, but all those forums are completely gone. Like I was trying to find things in forums from back in the days and I couldn't, like all the attachments are broken. I know some people that probably have some stuff saved, but it was just me being organized. Someone says, if you hear somebody going through your garbage, it's not raccoons, it's just me getting a 3D prints. <laughs> I have a gun. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, let me. You're looking at your, you're showing your hard surface technique with the extractions. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So uh, kind of. Let me just inflate this a little bit. So basically, what I did, I extracted from a mask, and then getting a, a thickness that I want. I could either mask inside, and kind of inflate it down, or you know, there's different ways to do this. The beauty is that when I have this, I can kind of zero mesh or z mesh it, you know, using this mesh and it will give me like a clean topology that will follow the edge. So even if my mask was kind of messed up, I can easily just kind of like, kind of smooth it out in shape. And that's kind of the main technique to get some of these pieces like clean like this. And then from here, I can kind of uh, 
that like hard edges. And I know there's easy, there's better ways to do this, but for me, it's just very easy to get like a hard edge back into this, or if I need to uh, still like mask it because the, the topology is clean, I can still mask it and kind of uh, sharpen the mask, push it out. You know, there's there's different ways to do like a lot of different tricks. I'm gonna push it in. The uh, the secret, at least for me, to get to a, a result fast is just kind of once I'm happy with the um, I'm happy with the sketch, I can just do this, and then from here I can kind of like I said, going with the slash slash three, like do certain things like this, do things like that, or I could just mask it, like push it in. You know, like it kind of like make it small or whatever to give it like a chamfer. That's uh, the beauty of uh, just doing this stuff fast. And then the mix of that with alphas, I can get some cool stuff. I have some, uh, some alphas that, that can be useful. Let's see, where do I keep those? Oh, man. I think I have them here. But anyways, like you could use these type of alphas. Oops. Yeah, those are spotlight alphas though. Oh, never mind. How do you use the spotlight alphas, dude? You gonna show me this? Okay, yeah. How do you, oh, there you go. I never used this before, Paul. No? No. And now you just sculpt across and it'll, yeah, sculpt in. Cool. There you go. Yeah, so I mix up like that and then pushing in alphas. I also made up, or I, I actually, I got some like insert meshes and I've made some insert meshes that I can easily come in here and just do the, uh, I don't think I've used any on this model, but the other model, the, the kind of samurai sci-fi chick, like it had a bunch of, a bunch of those alphas. Do you, so for you for Dynamesh, is it really more about the beginning stages for you, or do you find yourself using it all the way through, say, a finished finished piece? I know you mentioned you'll rematch the Dynamesh and then divide up. I, I try not to. No. No, I try not to use it at the end, just because, uh, just to avoid weird uh, topology issues with like smoothing and and or adding details like i try before i commit to something i'll just zero mesh it and kind of keep it clean you know i can still like the the beauty is that if i want to change it like i could still dynamesh it again and go through the process because it's so fast to just zero mesh something that i can just dynamesh it again if i want to change something and then zero mesh it again reproject details or whatever but uh, the final final things are almost always uh zero mesh kind of uh, mesh, I guess. What do you think are the like the main features of a like a character? When you're looking at a character, especially if you're going to design something, what is your okay? I want this really needs to stand out on characters. Like, is it it's about the eyes and the hands, or is it a face expression that you got to have that to really make the character pop off the screen? Is there anything that you feel is pretty much necessary when you're designing a character that helps it? push the character forward more? Oh, I think it, it I mean, it is design I, to me is just definitely about just commitment to like, you just have to commit to, let me take those boobs out of the, the screen so YouTube doesn't mess with this. Um, but I think it's just definitely committing to the, the design itself. Like if it is showcasing, um, uh, you know, like the sculpt, like you just gotta go for it and think about how, how impressive you can make it. And when I say impressive, it's not just uh, the complexity of it, but like impressive in terms of, of your commitment to what you're trying to sell. So if it is uh, a character that is, you know, emotional, that you're trying to come come through as like, whatever, like connect to the audience or whatever through the eyes, then you just have to kind of double down on that and make sure that comes through as, as clear as possible. Because I think that's very easy, especially in 3D, is just to go crazy and just kind of do do a lot, like a lot of detail, double down on rendering but you forget the initial intention of like 
primary shapes, the idea of, of what the character is. Like I've been going away from detailing as much as I can and just focus on the on the idea. And I think it helped me a lot of just kind of executing on the design. But I mean, it's a, it's a tough question. I don't know, like case by case, like what makes it uh, kind of a special, a special what makes the character special, but definitely to me, it's more talking about what the intention is and how do you sell that? Like there's a lot of simple designs that will sell that just because it's it's simple, right? It, it has to be simple. And then you focus more on on the uh, the primary shapes and, and the you know the polish level of of that. That makes sense. Yeah. Well, I think your all your characters and all your images, there's a lot of like some movement or like a positioning in there. So a lot of people are asking about posing. Do you pretty much just use the transpose line with masking to do most of your posing? Is there anything that you could share with them? Perfect, so, perfect question for this one. Let me pop this one up. Oh, you want to another one? You could probably guess what I, what I'm opening a ZBrush here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that actually would be a hard guess. You've got so much work. Uh, <laughs> yes, I guessed it right. Yeah. So like this one was a pretty complex scene for posing and getting the composition right. So to me, let me see here if I can. Actually, this one. Hit Shift Z if you want to turn off Spotlight. You have Spotlight still on. Sorry. There you go. Let me pull up the other, uh, how I got to this. So this is another piece that you're working on the weekend during your spare time, right? Yep. That you have. Yes. So I, I made a, a Venom portrait uh -huh. a while back. And yeah, I've yeah. used uh, yeah, I've used him as a start starting point for this. So I had the face for both Venom and Carnage uh, ready made from uh, from this other project that kind of saved me saved me some time. And then the body here is definitely I'm, I'm working from the start in the pose. You know, you know, first of all, these guys don't have a lot of accessories and crazy stuff happening, so it's not as complex for uh, if you were to think of like a character has a costume or why not, but um, in cases like this, I'm using a lot of um, just, just uh, I guess transpose. I use transpose master if I if I have to move more pieces at the same time. Let's see if this. Uh, all right, cool. Yeah, so like um, if I turn off the color here, like I would get similar to what I would do in a statue. Uh -huh. Like I would get the base pose down. And uh, even on statues, like if, if this was a character with a lot of costume, like I would get the pose down as a um, as a simple sketch, even at the beginning without the accessories or whatnot. If these guys had had accessories, like I could kind of come in here and at least block it out by proportion, like what the belt would look like and, and whatever. If you had like a, like the Ninja Turtles, for example, right? Like if I had the shoulder pads and whatnot, like I'll, I'll Block it out this way, but I'll have the pose from the beginning that I'll use as a guideline later if I had this guy in a T pose. So this is kind of a initial sketch using basically, you know, transpose to kind of uh, move it into place, like rotate, whatever, this kind of stuff. And then I'm sculpting, sculpting the muscles in the pose. So this guy and then the other guy here, same thing different poses and, and that's why I recommend you guys doing like like sketch poses like anatomy poses whatever like just to help you with like anatomy like stuff like this is not perfect but I can very quickly get something that that feels about right that has the the motion that I want and then from here like I would add like this guy and he will be like very simple sketch from that pose Right, and then from there you start making the the Spider Man himself. So you're you're going more from opposed with this piece on all these pieces. You're like, yeah, you're they're all them. yep. And you're using the same base mesh for all four of them. Pretty much, yeah. Like yep. you can see, this one it's a little bit different. Yeah. But I started from that from that base mail. And then from well, here. I, yeah, over. I think your hand tip was great in the beginning. How you you keep your hands separated actually is a great tip. Yep. Yeah, you can kind of see here how because uh, I can easily dynamesh the rest, and you can use like group, uh, you know, uh, like group dynamesh so you don't mess up with the hands or whatnot. But 
um, at least for like this, it's easy for me even to like manipulate this, this hand, that kind of stuff. And like from here, I, I would just throw it in 3ds Max or I'll throw it in Photoshop and I'll start sketching things like same thing that I showed on the spawn piece. And then it evolved to then after I'm happy with the composition, I'll just go de I'll just go crazy with details. So this guy uh, kind of same technique of like getting getting all the you can kind of see here very clear what I talked about the masking early on. Where I can kind of get these muscles to like pop pop out. And this is kind of low rest, but it's not finished, but getting these uh, very quickly, all this cool detail from the brushes. And it's very natural. Like I'm not intentionally putting these things here. It just happens from from the brush. Do you have a good tip to when you're doing something like this to make it not look like it's an accroche model, but it actually looks like a person that's just a little muscular? Is there any tips that you can share that you do? I think, yeah, I think honestly that that probably comes with time because the beginning of it is the accroche, like getting used to what what the muscles look like. So, for example, this leg. Like you can kind of make out what the muscles are, but it's a lot more of like a, there's a lot more flow to it where I'm trying to kind of uh, make decisions here based on the design, but the core of it is is an ecrochet. Uh, same thing for the arm. You can kind of see where, um, how I have the base anatomy going, but it, it all, especially this guy where it's it should be, it's all more about like how it flows with the webbing and all that that I can kind of break it up, break it away from the basic anatomy. And I still like, and, and that's what I'm saying, like probably comes with time and practice because like you need to be able to break it away, but still make it feel like it it works. And not, this is not perfect by any means, but um, I can, I feel that I can do that and still make it somewhat um, appealing. So same thing here for the shoulders, like this is not good or ana uh, perfect ana anatomy, but the base is still in here. Like same thing, like the trapezius here, and getting it all to flow nicely. And then the Spider-Man, like you can kind of see the before and after, where this is still uh, that initial sketch. And then I start throwing some muscles in here, and then this is all, you know, without symmetry or anything. This is in pose from here to here, and it's kind of a big jump. But is all the webbing paint or is it uh, extractions? No, I don't. It's all extract. Or actually, this one is masked with a uh, inflate. Okay. And then the carnage was uh, extractions. You so see this one is on him. It's all uh, extractions. I'm assuming then. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Oh, what, uh, let me see. Let me check. But this one is all like there's poly painted, like because uh -huh. I masked and push it up. Yeah. But it's all in in the mesh there. So if this was 3D printed, it would be kind of easier to do it. This one, oh, the Carnage one is all extracted. Yeah. This one's a little crazier. But I masked and uh, kind of extracted into a new piece. Ooh. Yeah. Kind of like what you showed for the bicep. You masked off what you want and then extracted and then played with the Yep. Yeah, yeah. And these are, I mean, you would see this ZBrush file here, just there's only four sub tools, but. This is because I'm combining it, uh, but I, when I'm working, it's all like there's a ton of them. So like this one, there's 18. But I try not to go too crazy with hundreds of them. But I just I uh, do it as like as much as I can, or as little as I can. Excuse me. Yeah. So from here to here, this is like the final kind of composition with all the webbing and and uh, it's a it's a cool piece like to even like 3D print or something, but it's kind of Are complicated. Are you trying to 3D print that? Oh, Is that no, your goal? Do you want to 3D print that? I want to 3D print a lot of things, but it's just <laughs> too much work. That, that's a tough one. <laughs> yeah. Just to like clean it up and all that, but I have some, some goals to maybe change the composition a little bit. I'll try to get them closer together. But this was a fun piece. I mean, just trying to go kind of quick. It's more about, like I said, it's more about the composition, what the piece is. And I'm not focusing too much on details. I'm not going too crazy with with that stuff. But it was, it was a fun piece, for sure. Uh, you mentioned you have a YouTube. I shared your workshop with them, too. Um, 
do you have any uh, other things where you show your full workflow going between ZBrush, 3D Studio Max, Photoshop? Do you have stuff on your YouTube? Yeah, YouTube is, is probably the best, the more recent place for free stuff. And then the characterworkshop.com is for the the real secrets. Okay, let me share your um, your YouTube in the chat so they can get to it as well. And I'm just kidding. There's no real secrets. He's got to do it. He does have a workshop that he does that you can actually take a class with Rap. Yeah. Sometimes. You're, if every time we're trying, you're doing something. I don't know why you have time. I'm always, especially, uh, especially with the kids. This is too fun, man. <laughs> There's his YouTube. So you guys have his YouTube. And let me get his workshop for you as well. So you guys have those right now as well, since people are asking about that. Let's see, did I forget something? Since we're here, and feel free to ask questions because I think uh, we can just go through this forever. So what exercises did you do when you first started sculpting that you found, like you were just talking about anatomy, like, hey, that's all with time. Was there certain exercises that you did in the beginning of your career that got you to this point? in your career, like knowing, look, I know where those muscles are. And it's only because, hey, I did 15 sculpts a day on an arm, you know, for a week. Right. And that's learned. I've never done that of like, just just focusing on something like, like a fanatic to like, oh, I'm just gonna be the amazing at anatomy. So I'm just gonna do this for months. It's just more like I'm doing a project. And I'm like, yeah, something is lacking here. So I just I, I need to sculpt like a, a human or the anatomy thing came out of like once you get into the industry, like people will talk about muscle groups and people will, you know, some people will kind of show off their their uh, knowledge on on you know, muscle names and things like that. So back in my head, it's like, oh damn, I need to sharpen up on that. So I got pretty deep into anatomy, uh, but uh, honestly, like I've just just because I've been doing nonstop for fifteen years, and like people would ask like, what's the secret? And I, you know, you know, the secret is just you got to do it. Um, every piece I feel that it's I get better on the next one like maybe I maybe it's worse than the last one but I won't see it and that goes like I know a lot of students who see that who, who have that and that still happens to me where I think something is good but then I look back a couple weeks later and it's just it's not it's, it sucks so I'll do it again and I'll do something else and that cycle never stops honestly like I, I'll still think something is good when I'm done but then I look at it now like I'll look at this this project here and you know it's recent. I still like some of the things, but I would change a lot of things if I would do it again. But I wouldn't know if I if I didn't do it, right? So I, I always say to people who work with me and students is that your first thing will never be your best thing. So if you want to be ready professionally, like if you get Kratos to make it Kratos, right? If I put you on the job today, uh, your first Kratos will not be the best one. So you, you need to be able to practice those things if you want to do it for real. That's how I think about it. So if I want to work for Marvel or, or DC or whatever, like not that that's the case, but if I want to do that, like a lot of people want to, like you just have to do it nonstop until you are better than yesterday, right? Like in, in the next day and the next day. So when you actually get the opportunity and you will, if you do it enough, you will, you will be ready and you will be delivering your best at that point. So that's how I think about it. And I, it, and it's just because it's fun. Like I haven't done a lot of, uh, just non-stop anatomy or non-stop um, whatever character design. Like you think I might be doing that now, but I, I'm just doing the stuff that I want to be doing or stuff that's fun. And I've been looking at art a lot more that way of just, it's fun. I want to have some fun. I think I'm at a point, especially in my career that I, I can have some fun that I don't have to worry as much about with the next job or, or, or whatever. So I'm just having some fun. It's been cool. So I think this is a good question because we talked about portfolios a little bit and someone has a good question. So as an art director, obviously you're doing a lot of, you've been doing hiring as a supervisor and things. So what's your take on having a model that's in the demo posing versus being T pose or a pose for portfolio piece. If you want to get in the gaming industry, is it better for them to have it posed in the portfolio or have it be an a pose or T pose? It's better to have a pose if your pose is good. <laughs> Let's put it that way, because <laughs> a bad pose can ruin a, yeah, can ruin a, a model. So I'd say um, have both. Like I think if you want to have something posed, like you have to commit to it. Like I see a lot of just halfway done pose where you, 
like you get something that just feels stiff and kind of hurts your skull. So it's uh, posing is definitely something you people should should practice and and it's something that I can look in a portfolio and know if you if you've done it enough or not because you only start seeing it if you've done uh, rep, you know repetition on that. So try to pose it for sure. That's uh, definitely a must have, but make sure it's good and it's not hurting some of your uh, your projects, you know, because you take months to get to a final and then you pose it bad and you kind of ruins the, the whole process. What's your favorite piece in creation that you've worked on and why? Man, my favorite piece, I mean, it would definitely be more of the kind of the God of War stuff like especially this this thing right here but that's more talking like i guess from the project like personally i don't feel like i have a favorite one like maybe this predator just because i'm a kind of predator predator geek geek type of guy and i want to do a new one because i don't like this one anymore but as you can see uh it's there at the top but I think you know, like this, the the Jormungandr scene in, in the in the God of War game, like that was a, a very challenging one. And I've I did a lot of things on this, like lighting, um, just all all kinds because of production and. Oh, you did the lighting in the engine for the game itself too. You yeah, yeah. That far down yep. the. Yep, I did. I did a bunch of stuff here, and it was a, a big collaboration with uh, you know Glauco and Igor and. The, yeah. you know of course the effects department just every everybody but that was kind of my first chance to like direct something and be heavily involved so that to me is still some of my favorite pieces what were there any characters in god of war that you hey i'm the one you did all the designing the initials initial design no uh, i mean I've, I've been involved on pretty much all of them but it, i can't really say that i've done design one that like this is like that one is mine because it's such a collaborative process and working with those guys like we all take take turns and um you know get things looking the way they they look at the end so you can i think nobody can say i i, I designed this like even kratos like I, I made the final model for it and i did design it as i was making it but the tons of people worked on it so it can't really yeah working in a big production like that you can't really say something is is yours yeah, that's the point i want to also just try to make with that question that people are asking like there's still a collaboration happening even in a studio atmosphere you're gonna have share models and many people have to work on it yeah good 100 percent. and and i've i've known so many people especially seniors coming from different studios where you would have certain ownership about some stuff in smaller studios you do have a lot more ownership but that's definitely one of the questions when we are hiring to understand personality and where those people are coming from because it is such a collaborative environment that you need to be able to let it go of something and pick up someone someone else's model like some people might not have as strong as as the skill set with anatomy for example or texturing or uh engine work and, and you need to be able to let it go and have other people with with better skills to take over so that's uh like initially you have to do everything for your portfolio but people have different skills uh, how long did it take you to, to do the yoshimitsu because you sculpted it printed it hand painted yeah. it all yourself right yeah yeah uh i mean the sculpt took me a couple weeks uh, but then the 3d printing part of it was uh was definitely a, a long process because I yeah. I was testing a new printer and I did a filament print uh, and then uh, each piece took you know a day or so so it, 3D printing was a long process and I was learning a lot that I was doing but the sculpt itself sculpt design because I designed that one in ZBrush as well was was about two weeks. I know. I know a couple of years ago, you and I talked, which was, I, and I just want to show this because this is a lot of people are asking things about you and you've been saying, look, it's just do the work and put some time in. Uh, I know a couple of years ago, you and I were talking and even on your lunch breaks, you were eating for like 20 minutes and then like sculpting or trying something different for the that rest of the time that you had for lunch and then getting back into work. Are you still doing stuff like that today? No, I'm rarely doing any art at work. Yeah. So I'm mostly in uh, reviewing work and meetings, and uh, sometimes I get to, to do some art, and I, I do some kind of 
uh, after hours because I still want to do stuff for the game. But uh, I, I don't. But I, I mean, I, I'll, I'll do it when I get home. I'll still stay. Like, I work from from 10 to 7, 8, and then I, I come back home, hang out with the kids and the wife, and, and then still do some work at night because I, I, I love doing this stuff. Are you do, or do you do the midnight early? You're staying up till like, 2 in the morning or 1 in the morning then? Do yeah, I, yeah. Is that what you do? Yeah. I'm, I, I prefer the night, too. It's a lot more quiet for some reason. I don't know. I just prefer that midnight oil time. Than the I try. I try to do in the morning. I try because I, you know, people say it's healthy for you, but man, my body does not function in the morning. Oh, not, not I feel like I'm gonna die for the rest of the day. I don't. I me, myself in the morning don't work very well together. <laughs> yeah. Try to go um, to the gym in the morning. Do you possibly have a scene that you already have kind of in Photoshop? You can show your render passes, maybe. Just you don't have yeah, to do them, see. but just show the pass that you've done in Photoshop. For a character, yeah. do you have yep. anything available to show them? Now is the time. Right? I'll pull it up. The, the we're, ninja. We're, an hour, we're an hour and a half in, so you're good still on time. Cool. Now is the time that I pull the Ninja Turtle. <laughs> <laughs> start start the stream with Ninja Turtle, end the stream with Ninja Turtle. <laughs> all right, guys, you guys are all here for this. I know. <laughs> so uh, I'll give you what you want. No, I'm just I just. Playing. Someone's asking, how do you wake up early when, when we're working at night? I'm going to go with kids. Kids wake you up. Oh, man. Your alarm clock? Yeah. Yeah. There's no... Uh... Is that really what who wakes you, kind of wakes you up a lot of times? Is the kids coming and waking you up? Uh, so, yeah, they, they wake up at like 7.30 or something. Yeah. yeah. And thank God for the, the... My wife's an angel. She lets me sleep a little bit more. But, you know, past 8 is... is Time to go to wake up. Yeah. So again, uh, he's going to show this. I'll put in the the video that he did as well. Again, in the, the YouTube video, there's a YouTube video of him going actually through the process. So I'll put that in there in as well. And there's a plugin again in photo in ZBrush called ZBrush to Photoshop. It is strictly based upon Raphael's actual workflow of taking his renders from zbrush and bring them into photoshop but i put a link of the exact part in the video in the very first zbrush summit that he kind of showed his workflow too of going from zbrush renders into photoshop they didn't want to call it a raft plugin but okay one day i'll get my don't blame me on that one <laughs> <laughs> okay let me uh sorry let me just clean this up because some bad stuff in here. All right. This is work in progress of what the final scene would look like. There's one turtle missing. But uh, let me see if I actually have. Oh, there you go. So. This is probably not the best example of what you guys are used to see from me because these guys are very much polished. You can kind of see the, amount, the kind of work that I'm doing. And, and I mean, this is very kind of standard industry standard of like compositing. And I, unfortunately, I don't have the layers in this thing, but I'll, I can show the layers separate. Mm -hmm. When I get it out of the render, here's kind of what I get. Like I will get this albedo pass, which is not super useful, but I can get some cool like a uh, specular breakup if I use this, be saturated and use it as a mask for the spec. That's sometimes useful. Uh, then I get like this mask. So like, okay. One of the things that I do to kind of speed up my process is before I get out of ZBrush, I'll combine all the pieces that have leather. I combine all the pieces that are metal. I'll combine all the skins and all this stuff, and I'll export them together. So when I'm in in uh, the rendering software, I can just apply uh, leather material. Like I've I've created like a library of different. IORs and, and glossiness that I can just apply to certain material types. So leather, I have a base 
basic leather, basic. This is kind of very PBR type of setup. Like we do that a lot in games of having standard materials that that you can just apply to things. So I can easily just apply to a metal or a leather or cloth or whatever. So then I'll get these material IDs that I can easily mask out pieces uh, in the compositing. So then I get a, you can't really see the shadow pass here because it's it's black on black, but I got a shadow pass and then the specular pass, which is very similar to what I'll get from ZBrush. Except in here, I have kind of a uh, the scene HDR that I get from the spec. So again, it's very similar to what the ZBrush pipeline it is, if you guys watch the videos, but I'm doing this in uh, uh, outside, of, outside of ZBrush for, for that in the skin pass. Not being really fancy with these passes. When I throw it in, in Photoshop, I can get this right here. And uh, the before and after, like this is straight out of the render. Well, I guess, sorry, straight out of the render, but combine all those passes to get a result. And then this is kind of just some touch-ups that I'm that I'm doing for that. So it's basically like tweaking some values and making some stuff pop and whatnot. Like I could do this in uh, again some back and forth. It just kind of if it was this for a game or whatever, or or a project, I could just go back and fix these things in a model. But here I'm just painting it in Photoshop. Uh, and then I did the same thing for all these other ones. Uh, that's kind of what this is, but some of, some other ones are more complex. If I pop up like the Yoshimitsu one that I did in ZBrush, it's the same process than, that this one is, but in ZBrush, which I find a lot easier to be honest. If I, anytime I can do that, I'll just, I'll do it. You, you, you never got into the key shot, right? You're just pretty much either ZBrush or then taking the max, right? Yeah. Yeah. I tried. I just, I kind of struggle with it. Um, well, to the question, just as someone's asking, I'm going to answer real quick. Uh, polypane is exported without UVs with STLs, vermals, OBJs, and FBX. All those formats will export out of ZBrush and import, except for you can import a vermal back into ZBrush uh, with also your color information. Yep. Let me open this one up. This Just is a good one. Just answering that question. How many lights are you using for these Studio Max when you set up your scenes? Are you just staying with the simple three key lighting system, or do you get involved? Hold on. I, I'll do a couple, uh, just the classic rim light, front light. Keep it simple. Oh, why are you chugging on me? So this guy is a better example. Oh, no. This one's ZBrush renders? Yeah, these, so these are ZBrush. And uh, kind of what I'm doing here, and uh, the thing that I that I've been doing more in ZBrush is to get like two different light. Um, this one's already, it looks like it's already combined, but I get some like different light uh, placements and I'll kind of combine them to add fake somewhat of a, a GI or like just more lights, bounce some bounce light and I'll combine them just to get rid of just that one directional light feeling. And then I'll combine kind of like a, a different spec, a different spec kind of a direction, more of a front spec. You kind of see here, this is just on the his mask, just on the face. Um, and then all after that, like I get, I can get very close results that I that I do on the other softwares, and then I'm just color correcting. Bringing levels down. Here's a bunch. This is all Photoshop stuff, and this is kind of a, a bottom light to kind of fake some SSS, get like some of that back into the shadow 
information. And this is an SSS render you're getting from ZBrush, right? You're still doing that? This, yeah, yeah. But this one is just the bottom light, getting oh, okay. like a, a, yeah. a bottom up. And I can get some kind of kind of interesting results there. And then I'm just kind of painting the eyes. And so it's like here, here to here is kind of a Photoshop painting business. Just kind of faking some of the, the eye reflection and cleaning up a few things. Yeah. All that's, right. That's the good stuff. Well, this has been awesome, Raph. I really appreciate you opening up to us and showing your pipelines, your workflows, and speaking to us about some items here. Uh, I know we're getting close to the end of the stream, so I just want to go through and make sure there's any other last minute questions that you might be able to answer before we cool. finish this off. We've been through so a lot of different things, so I hope you guys can, can keep up with the, the nonsense. I'm just bouncing all over the place. Are you an are you an avid gamer yourself since you're making games? Do you do you have time to even play games a lot? I, I watch a lot of things, like a lot of games that, that come out that I watch, like playthroughs. But I play the ones that I really want to play, like like the things that speak to me, like Ghost, Ghost of Tsushima, is like just depending on the, the genre and, and the gameplay. So I don't play everything, but I try to play as much. I try to play the, the first couple of hours of a lot of things. <laughs> is there a game that's been released recently that you were like, wow, they killed it. This was amazing. Uh, that you weren't involved in, that I that I weren't involved in. You now, Fall Guys is really fun. You know, yeah. see that one. <laughs> but I mean, Last of Us too. You know, Ghost Ghost right. of Tsushima was awesome too. Yeah. You know, all Sony games. Uh, okay, Do you play games, Paul? Are you playing any? Uh, you play? Not really. I don't play much video gaming. Uh, not like I used to when I was younger. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but no, I don't even have a. I think honestly, my my newest console system this will and this will give it away is uh, an Xbox 360. <laughs> That's the newest. So, uh, I, don't, yeah. I don't any of the newest Sony's or Xbox stuff now. Yeah, I've been I've been playing a lot of the Switch. Honestly, like Switch is amazing. Yeah, Switch is taking because it's just the gameplay, right? Nintendo just knows they kill it. Right? What yeah, it's just fun and easy to yeah, to start. Fun. Easy to stop too. Uh, someone's asking, wait, uh, how do you sell models made in ZBrush? Well, you can kind of do what Raph is doing as well, makes your own 3D prints. And then I know Raph goes to shows and he sells his stuff. Mm -hmm. um, you're usually at what, Monster Palooza? When, when we're back to reality and we can go to the places, yeah, you, go to what, you're, you have, usually have a table of Monster Palooza and now um, Lightbox. Lightbox. Are those the only two that you're? You're I've done designer it. designer con before, but it's been a yeah. couple of years, and I want to go back to it. Yeah, those are the kind of the main shows, but you can sell like I know a lot of people that are selling kind of they do patrons and they'll sell like miniature. Every every month you get like a, a 3D printable model, and those are being like very popular. And I I'm, I subscribe to a couple of them because it's just the the quality is great, and uh, so you could do that. You could do a patron that way, or you could just sell them and in like a, uh, you know, what, I don't know, websites. I don't want to give names, but some of websites. The 3D printing community is, is huge. So I hope more of us or more more talented artists will start doing that stuff, you know? Like I feel that sometimes you just find really bad models and we have a great community that I don't think we explore that as much. Like I, I've been meeting a lot of the guys that are popular on youtube like doing 3d printing channels and all that stuff and people just want that so like the more you guys can just look around and meet those those uh those guys like that's that's a great side of the industry that i don't think a lot of people are exploring what 3d printers are you using now what i know you you've got the ender you have the ender what else yeah i have five enders <laughs> you have five enders i yeah. didn't know that i wow. have just one here but I have five vendors because I got one 
and they sent me they sent me two and then i had to buy a couple more for work stuff wow. and then i have a uh any cubic those yep. the little one yeah which is awesome i love that little thing i definitely recommend if you guys are starting and you don't have a lot of money just get that that thing is awesome and then i got the bigger one the the new any cubic the mono x which is amazing if you guys haven't seen my review on youtube go check it out that thing is super cheap and it prints bigger than most of my printers and this thing is the epax 3d which is the same uh this is an older one but it's the same bed bed size and this one is a third of the price so i recommend you guys getting that uh what else i have i sold my form my form ones uh, in, in terms of like filaments, I have a CR10 and uh, Ender3 and an Ender5, and they all they all do the same thing. So, yeah, man, 3D um, printing is you've got is, a little factory. Yeah, that you I don't use. Factory there. That I don't use it enough. Yeah, I'm I'm the same way. I've got a form. It's always complicated. What way to point on camera? I got a form too right there, so that I use. Oh, that's too, awesome. But. I, I think I think that one is about the same size it. of these guys. Okay, 3D printing is is changing so fast, and it's, it's yeah, the big, bigger ones. Yeah, you guys gotta get into this. This is fun. Yeah, just for everyone too, in case you don't know, down below here in the stream is Raf's um, pages for his YouTube, his Instagram, his Twitter. So I highly recommend following him there, so you can find out when he's at shows, when we're back to reality. And then you yep. can see the pieces that he's saying that he's he's uh, sculpting and selling. I think this is a great avenue for ZBrush artists. There's a lot of ZBrush artists that do this. They make their own stuff and they go to a show and they they sell it, make some extra money that way. I think it's a great way to get your name out there as well, too. Yes. So I I think we're uh, I think we're done. I don't want to take up the rest of your evening. So I really appreciate Raf you doing this with us. This has been a real fun one for me and a ZBrush masters. Uh, so we're talking about how long we've been sculpting. I like I'm. I think I've known you almost now for 12, 13 years. You know, just being in the ZBrush commu community. So, I know, how amazing. awesome is that? Yeah, it's just great. Let's hope so the, really, the summits come back. Yeah, because those are the times that we all hang out. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you so much for doing this. This has been really awesome. I really appreciate you taking time out of your evening um, to do this with us. Thanks, Paul. I mean, appreciate the invite. Like, I know a lot of people watching us. Like, if you guys, I appreciate all the support. I know you. I know a lot of you guys follow me, and uh, and it's it's very welcoming. Like, a lot of the stuff that I'm doing, and and with the uh, the the pace that I'm doing, and the kind of posting it as much as I can, sharing more more than ever. Just because I've been doing this for so long, but I I didn't share it as much. That didn't mean that I didn't do it as much before. It's just probably it, it was just me behind the scenes just trying to get better so I, I do appreciate all guy all you guys support and i hope i hope i can help as much as i can you know the reason why we do certain things like this and the reason why i started the youtube channel it's not for you know to like money or whatever. you can have you can never make money out of those things it's just more for the platform make sure i can share more with you guys and and help like if you guys have questions reach out ask questions like make sure you put it on comments like this make sure you guys are are speaking out the what you know the things you guys want to improve or or anything that i can help so i appreciate the platform paul I, I what you guys are doing is awesome um it just helps a lot of people like i wish i had that when we were first starting and just hearing from people who are like i still remember going to forums and just trying to find out from a little screenshot how someone placed a light in the scene to get the nice render so like you were all, please help me how did you do this and you're just can somebody please reply <laughs> yeah no, exactly yeah, yeah and i still had those images of like man this guy just posted the one screenshot from 3ds max so i'm like what is these render settings like i'm just like zooming in is this a two or a one like what <laughs> so how often do you stream on your youtube channel so they know i was doing more before uh yeah. a couple weeks ago it's just i got busy with some other stuff that uh hopefully I'll get back to it, but I was trying to do uh, every weekend. Okay, on a, like Saturday, Sunday. Every like, Saturday, I'll, every I'll Saturday. either streaming or doing something else, like inviting 
somebody talk talk to somebody yeah. again it's just for have some fun being able to connect with other artists like we don't have enough platform platforms to do these type of things that are just open so yeah is there just a, a, specific, a specific time they always go on saturday pacific uh, uh three uh, three o'clock okay yeah, three after lunch. PM. so again i would recommend just following him on his youtube and that way you guys would know when he's streaming again yep sure and then that's his uh fan art page is also on facebook as well it's a great place to see what Rath is doing as well yep and instagram um, that's the big one for me yeah yeah well and again this is for those that are just tuning in these we do these every tuesday uh right now we have certain seasons so we're in the middle of season four so Rath was part of season four so next tuesday is going to be maria pampalova which is another amazing artist and her style is just so gorgeous and how the touch that she has in ZBrush. So you'll want to tune in for that as well. Um, she'll be the last episode for this season. So this is season four. And then uh, you'll want to follow us because then we obviously will be saying when the next season will be out and a list of artists that we'll be having. Um, this will is being recorded and it will be put on our YouTube channel. So you'll be able to watch this over and over and over again if you wish. It'll be there for you for life. He's bringing them out. Bring them out. He's bringing the big, the big boy. Bring them out. This is my baby. Uh, you, you documented that so great too. The way you were sharing that too on Instagram was perfect. Yeah, no, that that was the fun part of it because uh, yeah. this is something that I, it was just kind of doing as uh, people were watching it. So it's fun. Yeah, that's a great piece. If, if for if you guys don't know, he put this on his Instagram, so you could go find it. Is it a story? It's not a story though, right? It's just in the feed. Uh, I'm not sure. I think that, I, I think it's a part of the story. Maybe a story. But I have a new a new one coming up. You guys are, will like it. And that was all on the Ender, right? That was all on the Ender. Yeah. So that's the beauty of it. This was in a three hundred dollar printer. So you all all you guys could do it. Just ask yeah. yourself why why not. Yeah. Why are you not doing it? Just go well, do it. Yeah. We'll let you get out in your evening. I feel like you're going to now go and do some sculpting and do some more some more work for yourself. Uh, yeah, again, yeah. thank you so much for being a part of this. This has been fantastic. Uh, mm -hmm. appreciate you taking time to uh, sit here with all of us and share your, your techniques. Thanks, Paul. It's always great to hang out with you, and I hope we can bring the crew back together when all this stuff is, yeah. is over. Absolutely. All right. So this is Paul Gabriel with uh, Pixel Logic. This is another ZBrush Masters with Raphael Grissetti. Hopefully, we'll see you guys on the next ZBrush Masters. We are streaming on a daily. Many other artists stream on our channel every day. So please tune in to see a lot of other artists as well, having an opportunity to talk to them just like we're talking to Raphael today. So again, thank you, Raph. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. And have a great evening. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. Thank you.